Welcome to Verbal Peak Radio, where we give you a verbal image of life, and we are every day. People like to welcome y'all to the show. Today we have back on the show uh, Miss Deborah Jones, who you all saw in the interview when she was one of the first African-American females in the midst of the uh, coronavirus, COVID-19, that was on the cruise ship that was interviewed by ABC uh uh, Channel 13 here in Houston And we did her story And she's back on the show And welcome to the show Sister Deborah. Thank you Thank you No problem at all Now we, we just want to get Get into this though and, and really I'm venting right But but I, I I just want somebody On the show to ride with me To, to stop me If I'm going <laughs> too far You know what I mean Okay Okay now I got you Now okay Now look Now Back in 1963, when they first had the Civil Rights March on Washington, right? Uh-huh. And this is how it went. Okay. This is how it went. You had the, the, Malcolm, the Malcolm X supporters, right? Uh-huh. And you had the militants. You had the, the uh-huh. common, everyday people who were just sick and tired of the injustice. And so they said, you know, we finna go down to, to, to D.C., really, to, to, to tear this thing up. We finna take to the streets. We finna cause chaos because our voice finna be heard, right? Right. So when the city officials found out what was happening, they called Martin Luther King and asked him to stop it. He told them, well, I can't stop it because I didn't start it. They said, okay, well, I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's let's let let's get out in front of this thing, and you know we'll have people take turns speaking, and you can bring signs, uh, and you hear Malcolm talking about this. You can bring signs from your from uh, your your perspective cities. Uh, we'll tell you what time it'll start, and we'll tell you what time it'll end, and 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 it, it became a passive march, but the initial fire. The initial fire came out of the frustration of of the unjust treatment that blacks were being dealt uh, by this American system, right? So now fast forward to today. George yes. Floyd's death, right? Uh-huh. Now, some, now, George Floyd's family, which much respect to George Floyd's family, he stated that my brother was a, a wooden light the violent protest uh, because that's not uh, who he was and he, he didn't like uh, all of the, the destruction that the protesters was doing in in his brother's name, right? Right. But then a couple of days after that, a young man, uh, Mr. McAtee, who owned a, a barbecue restaurant in Louisville, uh, Kentucky, was shot and killed. They fired the police chief. There was some firecrackers either went off or a gun they heard went off, and they and the and the uh, national guard and, and the police officer turned around and fired their guns, and they killed this brother, right? And so uh-huh. that that's another incident. What I'm saying is, it's not just George Floyd, because now there's Mr. McAtee, then there's Eric Gardner, then there's. Sandra Bland, then there's Tamir, Tamir Rice, then there's Trayvon Martin. And the frustration of the people uh, bubbled over and it hit the streets and it moved like wildfire. I'm saying this to say from what I'm seeing is you have two minds working here. One who's saying, hey, that's it. I'm tired of the injustice in black men and black women being killed. Then you got another mind who's saying, hey, look, I can use this as a political tool uh, to get to, 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 to get me some votes or to push my agenda. And it seems like today that it's time out for all of that. Uh, I saw a 12-year-old young man who just said that I just don't want to die. You know, that, that was his whole sentiment. He just don't want to die. When it gets that bad... People will uh, aim their frustration and take it out on whatever they see fit because it it it, it they suffered enough. So, what what do you think, though, Dale? I mean, what do you think about all the rioting and all the protesting and 
and in all of this that's surrounding the the death of George Floyd. Now, I understand everyone's angry. I get it. But don't tear up your own neighborhoods, you know? I understand the frustration. I understand how long, how many years are we going to try? They're going to try to oppress us and suppress us and shut us up because they know we are powerful in more than one way. Right. So people are doing, I'm going to say some, what they know what to do. They're angry, so they ride and they loot it. No, morally is not right, but it's something that they feel out of anger. And they'll say, okay, this. Uh huh, I'm listening. But let me ask you this. Can you hear me? Let me ask you this. You know. What you're saying is, is true, and it, it's right and exact, but what about the ones that's going, ah, oh, we lost the call. But look, that's true, what she said. But the Galleria, it wasn't all done in black neighborhoods. People are riding and looting in every neighborhood. All over the globe. All right? But but we we we're not getting down to the reason why, you know. Yeah, Dad, welcome back I to had the some show. Difficulties. <laughs> I had some technical difficulties. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right, but but look, but they were riding in the Galleria. They riding in in uh, Times Square. So it's not just in black neighborhood that people riding in and tearing up. I'm saying that this 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 riding and the destruction is a reflection of the of the pain. That this of the anger. Yeah. Yes. Because, How many times is a brother right. or a sister right. going to have to die for somebody to say, look, you guys are just, what's wrong? The racist? Right. Well, the then, white supremacist? You are not above me. Let me let, me, let, me let them know. You are, you are not above me. That's right. You are not above me. That's God right. made me. He made you. And whatever image That's we cool. have, we have it. We have the image, and I have my dog skin, and I love it, and I'm embracing it. And I went out there Saturday. I went out there Friday, but I didn't want to go today because it was a massive crowd in support. And if he's a gentle giant, you know what that means to me? Mm -hmm. Then be gentle. See, when you quiet, and then you come back on them, but see, if you angry and tan up, then they don't know, okay, we're going to put them we don't put them down. We don't kill them and shoot them. But if you're quiet and you have to have this plan, you don't have to have a plan. What? You know what I'm saying? Right, you got to well, put a plan in place. Okay, well, let me ask you this. What should be done to stop all the killings and the racism? What, what, can, what, what can be done to get the attention of the, 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 the leader, the leaders and the politicians and the people and the races in the country, what can be done to, to capture their attention to say that, hey, we're not taking it no more? We're getting their attention. they just trying to ignore it. It's there. we doing what we know how to do and what to do, but they just like, okay, you know, it'll blow over. Uh. You know what I'm saying? Uh. That's what I think. They think it's just going to blow over. We'll say right now, then after a couple of weeks, and everybody fell down, then we'll go back to normal. No. But we got to do something. We got to do something. Because this ain't the freaking norm. Right. This is, you can't keep doing this. Right. That's the point I'm trying to make. You know, you can't continue to do this because it's like, you. it's like a bully. Sometimes, you know, you're not afraid of the bully. Sometimes you just don't feel like fighting the bully. You want to. Right. You want to go about your way in peace. Not that you can't fight. You just don't want to because you know once you get into it, you know the the back and forth, the friction, the struggles, the, the, the mental drain. So you choose not to. But when the bullet just bags you in the cone and just keep picking at you, then you got to come out the bag. You gonna come out the corner. You gonna come, you out, gonna the come corner. out the corner. It'll make yeah. you come out. It'll make you come. you up. Right, and it'll make it you come out the corner. You, up. Yes. you know, yes. it, right? Because 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 black people, let's face it, we under we under two things, right? 
we under our our parents and grandparents who taught us to be passive and turn the other cheek when it comes with dealing with white people. We under the the notion that because when you was younger, hey, all you seen was a white Jesus. Yes. Everywhere, you know what I mean? You know, you turn on your TV and it was white images of how life was supposed to be portrayed. You know, so you didn't want to book what was in your subconscious mind on what you thought or the way you thought things should be. Because that means you would have to tear down your whole perception and image of life. Right. And people didn't want to do that. We keep tearing down stuff. We got to come up with something constructed that's going to really wake those folks up. Right. And see, then that's what I'm upset with, though, Deb. Because I'm hearing Trump, I'm hearing uh, officials in high places, and none of them are saying what they're going to do to stop the racism and to stop the police brutality. They didn't come up with a point plan. They didn't come up with a, we're going to do this, we're going we're to make sure this is done, we'll make sure that this will never happen again. All they're talking is, we're going to investigate and see. You know, I mean, come on. We, we want, what's the solution? You know, unless they unless they waiting on us to come up with the solution and give it to them, somebody got to come up with a solution. You know, uh, we have more technical difficulties, but uh, uh, Sister Depp, but someone has to come up with a solution and dealing with this issue. You know, somebody got to come. It has to be a solution. You know. Yeah, we got you. We 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 got you, Deb. I'm saying somebody got to come up with a solution. It got to be a. It got to this problem. Got to be. It got to be a solution to this problem. Well, Cole, I think you and I need to come up with something. We're gonna have to come up with something. Everyday people, we're gonna have to come up with a plan. With a plan. Well, I got a plan. You know what my plan is. What? This is my plan, right? This is my plan. If we can't. Get along and come together, right? It's in the back of the final call. Then look, government, fund us. Let let those black folks who want to separate in America get our own land. Or, or no, give us a, you know, not take that back. Give us Houston. Okay. And all the rest of the races can move up out of Houston and move all the blacks and all the whites and whatever into Houston who want to live in peace and we just operate it and they can and we'll separate. It's like it's like a okay. bad it's like a bad marriage when the, some when when somebody <laughs> you know what I mean? somebody constantly getting beat. Getting beat. Yeah. And so yeah. It's, it's like, okay, you know what? It's time for me to separate before before I pull this knife and kill somebody. Before I pull this gun and shoot mm-hmm. somebody. So let's just go and mm-hmm. separate then, because we are then we can't get along. That sounds like a plan to me. Yeah, because somebody going to wind up, because if, 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 if we can't get this thing together, I'm saying, somebody going to wind up getting hurt like somebody wind up getting hurt now. So I can't, look. Like they had, did, did you, the day, now let me tell you what happened today when they did the march. Mm-hmm. So then old brother go up there and he talked about, then he went on a different, he went, he went to the political but see, that's, that's not what it's supposed to have been about. He mm-hmm. went to the political realm, which that's not what that platform was for. It was only in the name of George Floyd, not political. But he went there, the brother did, the last one that spoke. Mm-hmm. You know who it is. So mm-hmm. I'm just saying, some people, they use that. That situation for them, for November, the vote. Because you notice, they kept saying if you want to change, get out the vote. Yeah, get out of the get vote. Out the vote. Yeah. Man, black get folk. I don't I don't knock voting, but I'm saying, you know how long black folks been voting? I uh, know. You know how long we've been voting? Hell, 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 we voted. Hell, we didn't want we didn't want Trump in office, but those four, those uh what you call them, electoral college, uh that yeah. put him come on, more predomin- that's that's predominantly white areas, man. You know, we we come on, okay. Then, then look, like Malcolm say, here, yeah, the liberals act like they're our friends, but they got the same agenda. We see, we got, we got to be sick and tired of being tricked and played. We are not children, 
and we need to right. control our own destiny. You know, you, you know, and we do. You know, you know, you we know. Do. You notice how when you was younger, how white folks used to try to talk to you like you. They had to try to extra explain something to you like you couldn't comprehend or like you was a child. Or right. Something. Well, yeah. they still do that now. Right. I'm days played out. I'm not your damn child. Don't point your finger at me. And they still calling you girls and boys. Yeah, girl. What's that about? Yeah, well, I said, man, please. Please. I'm days over with. That's And that's what this is about. They is telling people those days are over with. But then you got some of our own people who can't conceive a new day. They, they don't, they don't, they're not ready for change. They still stuck in the old... 1800 way. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. You know, like Stephen uh-huh. on Django. They, they they don't want to come up come up to the moderate times. Right. You know, that, that, I just hope that we could just live together for real. For real. For real. Be in my corner. Have my back. Don't just pretend and walk beside me and you knowing all the time that you're a perpetrator. That's right. the time out for all of that. You, just if you don't if you don't like me, then just say I don't like you because I can tell you I don't like right. you, but mm-hmm. I can still work with you. Right now, nah, well, that's one thing you can say about Trump. Trump let you know I don't care nothing about you. So don't he, care. at least he ain't smiling, shaking your hand, then stabbing you in the back. You know where he coming from. You know already. <laughs> you know already. He don't <laughs> like you. You don't give a damn. Whatever. That's you know, and that's just what it is. But yeah, damn I. You know, you some you know, we we we're just discussing the, the, the current events, the current issues and trying to project a, a pathway into the future because hey man, this is these are some some, some wild times we live in, England, you know. Coco. You know I just want I just want some peace. I just want some peace. I just want peace in me and I pray for peace for the entire world. All my friends, my enemies. I pray for him every day, but it's got to come some kind of change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some got to change. Man. Some. And it's gonna take mindsets like you and me. That's right. That's on the same mental level, and we're gonna have to come up with something and just brainstorm and say, "Is this? Is this? Is it? When is enough enough?" All right. I mean, it, it got so bad to where. This I also felt just comfortable sitting there with his knee in the man's neck, like, I know, right? like whatever. I'm just killing another nigga, so who gives a damn, you know? And the people are like, wait a minute now, this barbaric, uh, this is not the 20th century, you know? And I know. and the other three, I don't know what's taking them so long to be arrested. They were watching it to make sure nobody, because I'm watching it. I'm looking like, you know what? If I could have got into that TV, no. if I could have got into that TV and, and bang one of them dudes on the head and knock them jokers out, I ain't violent, but look. Yeah, they, look. They kill yeah. Yeah, you know like, yeah, like Pac said, I ain't a killer, but don't push me. You know, it's it's crazy. It killed the man, this need on his neck to his life. And the, the man crying for it, the man hollering for his mama, he was in some pain. Mama. In some pain, and that still that in that 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 cold devil's heart, he 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 didn't even hear the cries. He's like, yeah, whatever, nigga. Ah oh, man, he, it just. You know mm. what? He he he. Uh, they need to give him the death penalty. Yeah. I'm just yeah. sorry to say that, but uh, I ain't sorry to say it. Yeah, no, that's, that's what he need to get. Yeah, yeah, because, man, you got children going at that. You got folks who had nightmares behind that, man, seeking counseling from watching that horrific image. That yeah. was like, and I was like, and I, I got to the point, I had to stop watching it. I had to cut the TV out because yeah. it was, like, disturbing. This it was, was so disturbing. So it was mentally disturbing. And that, and see, yes. and that's what set out the shockwave to where people just went ape shit. Folks just like people. in the sixties, the dogs. They sick the dogs on people. Oh, women. How you gonna sick a dog on? How you gonna sick a dog on me? On a human being, on a female. Oh man, that that, so that means you. That means you. Up. I ain't gonna say that on my air, but anyway. Yeah, just anyway. That means that they some sick, mixed up individuals. Wow. And he was taught that. 
he was called racism. He was yeah. called that. Yeah. Now you right. Now that you right. Now that one way you right now. How can you n- stop racism from being taught in the home? It's in the home. How can you stop it? I guess you can't stop it, can you? In the home, because they're in their home. It's their home. They feel like they got a right to teach their child to hate you, and that's fine. Right, but when right. you when you inflict harm out of your right. racism, like Dylan Roof go up in the church and kill nine black people, and then the police I'm officer, the police officer stop and give him something to eat, treat him like he was a regular everyday citizen. I mean, come on, man. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. All right, but this is the time we live in it is, it is what it is. But like you say, you now we got to hope for the best and prepare for the worst. And there, I'm going to say this. If you, I'm going to say this. I went to a march a couple years back in San Antonio for Martin Luther King's celebration. Mm-hmm. If I tell you it was thousands there. Mm-hmm. If I tell you there were thousands there, mm-hmm. there were thousands. Mm-hmm. And I mean, we walked for miles, mm-hmm. at least three, from one side of the city, and they were in unity in San Antonio, Texas. Mm-hmm. Look it up. I got photos of that mm-hmm. event. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of- we just going to have to stay. We're going to have to just stay focused and keep on this. Yeah, got to. got to. It's a lot of power in Texas. It's a lot of power. Right yeah. here in Houston. Right, right here in Houston. It's a lot Houston. of power. That's right. We you know, it. we got more shops now. Black folks got more shops still. Uh, entre- entrepreneurs, we have more shops all over in Third Ward and all over. Man, I mean, it's big. in Houston, in the Serrano Care, from Houston to... Paraland to Fresno mm-hmm. to Cypress to Katy to Hempstead to Black Towns, Black everywhere. Right. You know, Piney Point, Carver, Dale Acres Home, Third Ward, South Park, Sunnyside, A Leaf, Southwest Houston. Right. I mean, we doing it all, you know, all over the city, man. Four Ward, Texas. Real Four Ward. The train, <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> hey, it don't stop, man. It do not stop. But, Deb, I appreciate you being on the show, Sister Deb. You're welcome, and man. Anytime. Time. That's right. Verbal Peak Radio, and we out.